Sorry for the late start. We were waiting for uh, Michael Messenger to show up. He finally did. Okay. Uh, please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws, 1975, this meeting has been newly advertised in the Esparc Press issue of January 18, 2013. All municipal clerks of townships and boroughs within the regional high school district have been duly notified and the requirements of posting the notices have been met. Okay. Uh, minutes approval. Okay. Uh, motion for? Motion. Second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Boyce? Mr. Asatola? Yes. Mr. Berto? Off the pass, I was not here. Mrs. Canario? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Cetera? Yes. Mr. Mazik? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, the reports. Superintendent's report. Okay, uh, number, of, number of items this evening. So we are in full school opening preparatory mode. Uh, the uh, B&G department has, uh, I think, done a phenomenal job this summer. Uh, I'd like to compliment uh, Pat Lagravenis and his, his first summer as the uh, director of buildings and grounds, I think, has uh, really kept us humming. Uh, and just uh, to update the board and the public on a number of the projects, I just wanted to go through just a quick list of some of the things that we've done this summer because I think it puts into perspective how much work uh, gets done uh, when school's out of session, we can get into the building. So uh, just a few items. Uh, in, at Colts Neck High School, we've done a, a main gym bleacher repair. We've replaced the chiller compressor, which is a significant project. Uh, Freehold Borough, we've done a partial roof repair over the stage. Uh, we've replaced some exterior doors there that were a problem for uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, Freehold Township, we've replaced uh, some exterior doors. That's, uh, we're finishing that hopefully uh, by September 6th. Um, we've, uh, we're working on the HVAC system in the main office, which has been a problem for a couple of years and, and uh, will be a few months to, to, to complete the process, but uh, it's underway. Uh, we've done some main office carpeting, uh, guidance office flooring was replaced, the installation of sod on the soccer and lacrosse field uh, we were able to get done. Uh, we've done some auxiliary gym floor repair. Um, we're in the assessment phase of replacing the, the track and, and hopefully we get that done prior to spring of 2014. Uh, in how we've uh, uh, the how media centers uh, constantly in, in some conversion process uh, and, and we've done that uh, to create two more additional offices uh, we've uh, removed and replaced some trees across from the front of the school front of school how high school looks fantastic if uh, if you haven't seen it preparing for our uh, I believe our 50th anniversary this this year um, Manalpin uh, guidance office flooring is uh, in progress, going to be replaced by uh, later the end of this week. Uh, we're still moving forward with final inspections for RLA, which has been uh, quite an elaborate process. Uh, we've redone some uh, elements of the RLA art room. Uh, we've turned a portion of the media center into additional computer labs. Um, we've uh, refinished the gym floor. Uh, we're in the process of replacing the tennis court fencing. Uh, and the track at Manalpin is in the assessment, assessment phase as well. Uh, Marlboro, we're finishing the conversion of a science lab to a computer lab, uh, which will be done by um, August 30th. Uh, at the transportation department, we've um, replaced the driver area rug with tile, uh, replaced a number of windows uh, in that area. Uh, and we continue um, to move forward with the ESIP process. Um, uh, Mr. Boyce updated the uh, finance committee uh, during our last meeting. You want, you want to just say a few words about where we are with that? Sure. Um, <clears throat> the ESIP process on a, on a very global level is uh, it's, a, it's a funding mechanism uh, that's part of a, a package to address our capital needs. So if you think about there's there's a number of, of capital <coughs> improvements that have uh, energy benefit to them. 
Um, and there are different ways to fund that. <coughs> the primary way that we're going to fund it is through, is under the ESIP law, which is uh, Energy Savings Improvement Program. And what that allows districts to do is, um, is to borrow money, a, a long-term energy savings obligation, in order to fund those capital improvements, which in turn generate uh, energy savings, which is used <coughs> to pay off the debt. So it's a break even at worst scenario, if not better. Um, so that's one, one part of the package. Uh, there's also a significant subsidies associated with energy savings um, projects through BPU. Um, uh, recently was announced that uh, the state of New Jersey, which has had since 2000 um, grant monies available to school districts uh, for facility related projects. On tonight's <coughs> agenda we have uh, motions for us to submit and, and try and get our share of those as well. So between energy savings, subsidies, and state grants, those three things pay for um, the, the capital projects that need to be done. And this is primarily HVAC, lighting, uh, some roofing stuff as well. Uh, things that are going to need to be done anyhow. Uh, this is a way to do it which is does not impose on the dollars that we use for instruction, um, and nor does it have a tax <coughs> to it. So it's, it's, a, it's a good story, and right now that the Energy Savings Plan, which is the document that, that um, addresses all of this, is being finalized. The chronology of it is to uh, send that down to BPU for the public utilities down at the state for their review. Once, that's, once it gets through them, it then comes to the Board of Education for approval. Um, and at that point, once it receives board approval, we fire off with the project. So we'll be seeing more in, uh, in short order on that. Thank you, Mr. Boyce. Uh, a few other, few other notes. We have uh, spent the better part of the past couple of weeks, uh, the administrative team here at Freehold Regional High School District, in, in uh, some very intensive training around the Marzano teacher evaluation model. So last week, uh, we, we have the, usually the third week in August is, is what we call uh, supervisors week here at the district. It's where our academic supervisors report back and are doing uh, a lot of work um, to, to prepare for the opening of the school year. This year, we really morphed uh, that week uh, into a training period for all of the administrative staff. And so we went through um, a certification process where uh, we spent uh, a lot of time uh, practicing something that's called inner rater reliability. And so that's when multiple observers are uh, observing the same classroom and coming to consensus on what they see as it relates to teaching and learning in the, in the simplest terms. And that is much more difficult than you might expect, uh, especially when you're using uh, an evaluatory rubric that might have a, a significant number of components and individual administrators may focus on different elements of, of, of the lesson. And it was, an, it was an excellent session, and I think by Friday when uh, the administrative team in two different, um, an afternoon and a morning session were taking a certification test at the end of it, so that's where you observe a lesson and you're, and you're answering on, uh, you're evaluating the, the lesson, the video lesson, uh, and then sending that off and having that, having that scored. Uh, because it, the requirement in Teach New Jersey Act, the Teach New Jersey Act that has promulgated uh, the, the new teacher evaluation system, the superintendent of the schools is the individual who signs off and says, I verify that every, in, every administrator in this district who is conducting evaluation of faculty and staff has been properly trained in the model in which they're using. And so as superintendent of the schools, I'm not comfortable unless we have uh, some real significant training around that and as one of the additional things that we did this year uh, was we we created three days of intensive training for any administrator who had been um, who came to the district after we had started our training throughout the course of the year who was either uh, you know promoted or a new hire to make sure that everybody's on the same page uh, when we open school in September so I thought it was a, a, a wonderful team building uh, experience. What we're doing this year, uh, this week, as a team is we are, are focused on the evaluatory model of administrators in the district. So all the building administrators, central office admin, 
uh, and the such will also be under a new evaluation system this year. So it's, so it's new for us as well, but we hadn't spent the time learning our model of how principals and assistant principals and supervisors and seekers are going to be evaluated. So that's what we're doing this week. Uh, and we have three days uh, devoted to that. At the end of the week on Thursday and Friday, we have our annual new teacher orientation. Uh, that, uh, we're excited uh, for that on, on August 29th. Uh, I'll open that up with the new faculty and staff for uh, this school year. Uh, and, and really, we, we the first day, um, we like to uh, do a theme of being successful in your first year in Freehold Regional High School District and what are our expectations around teaching and learning in the district and what do we expect of you as a, as a faculty member uh, in the regional. And then we have our school opening on September 3rd will be the first day that the staff returns. We have a full day slate uh, planned. On that very first day, the, the morning session will consist of uh, an opening convocation, which uh, I spearhead. Uh, we then have Kevin Baird, who is uh, from the Common Core Institute, is going to address the faculty and staff about the linkages between Common Core and teacher evaluation and, and, and what, you know, what Common Core looks like uh, in the classroom. And he, Kevin has done some work in our district in the past and been very well received by the faculty and staff. So we're looking forward to that. And in the afternoon, uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Usually, we stay in, in one location, which uh, tends to be Free Old Township High School. But we're going to break out back to our, our schools uh, and uh, within our departments are going to begin immediately to work on the development of student growth objectives, which is another requirement of uh, the state this year. Uh, that needs to be in place by November. We've already laid the groundwork for uh, establishing uh, our framework for how we're going to operate, uh, what our expectations are for faculty and staff around those SGOs. Uh, with our school improvement panels that started their work last year uh, in the spring to identify particular building-based uh, deficiencies, areas that we think we can improve upon, which will serve as the springboard for the work we're going to do on September 3rd. So we're going to hit the ground running uh, in 2013-14. I feel terrific about where we are as a school district today and the work we've done over the summer. Uh, Dr. Hazel and I were talking uh, last week uh, and uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Dr. Hazel, but, but she said to me, you know, this is the first summer uh, since I've been here where I feel like my head is, is, is above water over the summer. I feel real confident about where we're headed, um, and, and I, don't, I don't feel like things are hitting us. Um, you know, so we feel like we're really um, poised for a great school year, and of course, you know, you say that, uh, you jinx yourself. Um, but I, 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 I'm, I'm wholly confident where the school district is. I'm wholly confident where we are to manage those state mandates uh, that are going to come to fruition this year in a manner that uh, we own what is important to us within the context of meeting those mandates. So, thank you. Okay, uh, board reports. Public participation. Regarding the agenda, Mr. Burgess. Oh, wait, wait, let, let me just say for this moment. Okay. Public participation? <laughs> no. Yes, Mr. Weiss. Uh, the agenda, there is a, a yellow addendum uh, that's been put on the back table. The agenda has uh, some following corrections here. Uh, on page four under appointments, Eric Gross, uh, that should read Freehold High School, not Freehold Township High School. Uh, also on page six with Eric Gross, it's um, changed to vocal director for Freehold High School in the amount of 4568 and the change of status for Eric Gross is uh, music change to music director Freehold High School um, at 6960 also uh, the appointment of Walter or Jeffrey Walter uh, should add an asterisk with the notation subject to criminal history clearance um, page 8 facilitators for new staff orientation you'll see that uh, it notes that it's up to a maximum of six hours. That's what the number says, but the word says four. Six is correct, so it'll change the word. And then on the yellow addendum, page three, uh, Gina Monique Sorkin should be spelled with a Q and not a J. Thank you. Uh, before, before we uh, get to the uh, agenda, real quickly, I just want to, as the uh, Freehold representative, welcome Eric. To the high school. I've known Eric for a couple of years. He does excellent work. 
and I'm sure he's going to continue on uh, with uh, the program soaring to new heights. Welcome, Eric. Not, not changing your commute very much, correct? Sorry. Not changing your commute very much, correct? All right. Um, um, go ahead and do the thing. I'd like, I'd have to no, go do, do the agenda first. Okay, let's do the agenda. I'd like to take it in a one shot. Uh, I know Carl has a long commute tonight. Yes. Yeah. Do we, we don't need to vote on that right no, now. Motion. motion to take the agenda? Motion. Second. Second. There you go, Carl. Discussion? Say no. I can't do that. What was the, what, what, did you, what motion did you ask for to take the agenda in one shot? Yeah, or, shot. Yeah. Okay. So, and now you have right. to. What was the first and second? <laughs> Mr. Can we withdraw the motion and just make a motion? Let's repeat again. Yes. Can we withdraw that motion and I'll set up a new motion? Yeah, you don't have sure. to ask for that motion. I don't have to ask for that motion. Yeah. Right. If the right. board does not want to do it, you right. won't get a first and second and pass. I see. Go ahead, Mary Ann. I would like to make a motion for uh, to vote on H1 through H7, I1 to I4, J1 to J2, K1 to K13, and any additional, and the addendum. I second. Discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Acetola? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mrs. Canario? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Sutera? Yes. Mr. Mazek? Yes. Yes. I'd like to welcome uh, Brian Post. Uh, if you can stand, Brian, it will uh, be the <laughs> Brian will be the uh, new science supervisor at Hal High School. Uh, he's been at Hal as as a classroom teacher. Uh, has uh, done some nice things in the district that, uh, particularly around technology, but has excellent science knowledge. Uh, we think will be a wonderful addition to our administrative team. Uh, he just came back from Disneyland with his, with his uh, four children, so I, I think that he'll be working not quite as hard now that he's back from Disneyland. Um, but Brian, welcome, and, and we wish you all the best. Okay, uh, old business, uh, new business, no business. So you not have a motion? Adjourn the meeting. Second. No discussion. Right? We have no discussion on that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Uh, wait, we didn't hear from um, Michael. Oh, Michael's my got his hand up. 